And welcome everyone to Real Leaders for the Global Goals. I'm your host, Kevin Edwards. Alongside me today, we have Fahad Adwa, the Chief Cashew Officer of YYTZ. Fahad, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So why is YYTZ in the cashew business, and what are some of the problems it's aiming to solve? Yeah, all right. Well, um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I grew up in Toronto. I was born in Tanzania. And I moved back to Tanzania uh, late 2012, and I wanted to do something. I wanted to create value somehow. And I was very aware of the narrative that Africa as a continent produces a lot of commodities, agri-commodities, a lot of products, but very little value addition is actually done on the continent. Um, and so I looked at what does Tanzania produce a lot of? And funny enough, Tanzania is the third largest producer of cashews in the world. Mm. Africa produces 60% of the world's cashews, but less than 10 is actually processed on the continent or in the country. And mm. by processing, I simply mean removing the shell. So if you can imagine, these cashews are shipped out to India, to Vietnam, where the shell is removed, and then they end up in countries like the US, which is the largest importer of cashews uh, okay. in the world. Um, and when I learned that, I thought it was just insane that cashews would go halfway across the world just to, to have the shell removed, yeah. right? And so I set out to figure out, one, why was that happening? And then two, to see uh, what would be the better way to do it. Because obviously it has to be done in Tanzania, but I thought that there could be a better way to do it by also involving not only the farmers, but the community in that process. So ensuring that more of the value that's created actually reaches the people that, that work on those trees, that take care of those trees, that produce these uh, delicious nuts that now everyone loves. Um, and so the, the, the problem that we're trying to solve or what we're trying to address is, uh, one, the inequity that exists in this value chain. Uh, you can imagine that um, the prices that are paid to, to these growers because they are simply just raw material producers is, is very low. Um, and then also the sustainability aspect, because cashews, moving cashews, thousands, millions of tons of cashew around the world, one to India and Vietnam um, to process, and then now yeah. back out again to, to, to the US, to Europe, uh, is not sustainable. And sometimes even back to Africa. So for example, South Africa, they import cashews from Vietnam. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so these are the kind of things that we're trying to address, and then also the, the inequality, so making sure that more value actually reaches the communities where it's, uh, where it's grown. So uh, let me just try to break this down. Yeah. So the cashews are in Tanzania, and yeah. they're delicious, yeah. but they're in their shells. But you ship them out to places like India just to break the shell, and then it's yeah. distributed throughout yeah. uh, all of Europe. Yeah. And so you're taking out that middleman, yeah. and you're bringing more value back to the people yeah. that are harvesting the shells themselves, yeah. thus reducing the carbon emissions as well, yeah. and providing more money into the pocket in the economy. Yeah, exactly. In Tanzania. Okay, exactly. I'm there. So, at business call to action. Yeah. Are you incorporating the SDGs in any sort of way, or is this thing just already baked into the company's DNA? It's, yeah, it's, it's baked in, right? Mm -hmm. I think what, we're, what we do is we're looking at, one, how to improve uh, access to, to income for these groups, for the women that we work with and the farmers and communities that we work with. We're trying to improve the sustainability of the cashew um, because, like you said, the carbon... Uh, footprint that is associated with a cashew nut is one something that a lot of people don't know but it's in, it's incredible that just by processing in Tanzania you can reduce the footprint by 67 percent right yeah interesting yeah cashews yeah, yeah cashews yeah and yeah. why and why is South America not or South America why is South Africa buying from Vietnam too isn't Tanzania super close yeah it is but because of the lack of processing being done in Tanzania right it's they're just, just extra yeah it's just it just there isn't that that kernel that finished product to go to South Africa mm. so they end up getting it from other places I'll give you another example which, yeah, which is also um, uh, so Rwanda are you familiar with uh, Rwanda which is just next door to Tanzania, but inland, yes. right? Yes, yeah. Um, like their history that you're referring to? Or no, no, location. Just, okay, location. Yeah, location, yeah. yeah. Um, so Rwanda, I was there for a conference last year, the AGRA conference, um, which is, AGRA is a, I don't know if you're familiar with AGRA, it's African Gro Green Revolution. Um, 
I'm there. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was, uh, it's supported by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, oh, a lot okay. of uh, development Thanks. partners. Okay. Um, so, so they had their conference. And, and what I do whenever I go to anywhere is I go to the supermarket and I'm trying to see where do the cashews come from, right? And these cashews that I found in the supermarket, the one, there was only one pack, one brand. Um, they were from Belgium. So those cashews, they, from Belgium, they most likely came, Belgium doesn't produce, so they came from Vietnam, right? Vietnam is the largest exporter to Europe and the largest exporter to the US as well mm. for cashews. They were processed and roasted in, in Belgium, but the origin from Vietnam is actually most likely Africa because 80% of what Africa produces ends up in Vietnam. So 80% of what they process comes from Africa. Africa produces 60% of the world's cashews. Hmm. So they came from Africa, they went to Vietnam, the shell was removed, they ended up in Belgium, they were roasted and salted, they were packed, and then they were brought back to Africa, to Rwanda, through the port of Tanzania. And you, and you found that out that just going to a grocery just, store? Yeah, because I went and, and, I, like, and I tried to figure out, okay, this so is, this what is, do you do after that? So after that, one, it's, it's very clear that there's a huge, it's a huge problem, right? And it's, and it's on the production and supply chain side. So one, the first thing I can do is say, I know that there is a market for cashews in Rwanda and that I can process them in Tanzania and take them straight to Rwanda without them having to go halfway around the world, right? right? Silly. And, and also making sure that the value, because if you look at now the value that's created from that cashew, when it's sold and purchased in Rwanda, but the product was produced wholly in Tanzania, all of the value stayed in Africa, mm. right? Whereas now, if it's moving around the world, then it means that the value is also being distributed halfway around the world. Right. And what that leads to is poor farmers, right. right? So cashews are expensive in the supermarket, but the people that produce them are still poor. So in theory, could you even drop the price and then still pay the farmers more? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and have you done that yet? Are your and cashews so, in that store now? So now what we, so this is maybe if we're getting to like how, how we work or what we do, yeah. right? Um, what we've done is we've looked at how do we make this value chain more inclusive um, and working with farmers and small women processing groups. So these groups, we found them in the rural communities in Tanzania where cashews are grown. They're farmers, they work with cashew, and they wanted to actually add value. But the biggest problem for them was access to a secure market to sell. Who's gonna buy these cashews mm. from us? So we thought, okay, if we're gonna do processing, we're not gonna do it the traditional big, kind of big box way, right? where you just set up a huge factory, you're buying raw cashews, and you're spitting out cashews, right? We wanted to see how can we involve the communities more in this value addition process, right. because then if they can participate, then we can also pay them more, make sure that more value reaches them. So what we've done is tried to see how can they participate in the first step of removing the shell, something that they were already, we found them already doing this. Mm. So we wanted to see, one, how can we help improve that for them. So providing maybe uh, equipment, because a lot of it was being done manually. So small machines, and I'll give you an example. A lady, she sits at a cashew table and she can shell maybe 40 kilos a day if she's really good, mm -hmm. right? With a small semi-automatic machine, she can do 600 kilos a day, right? So it's a 15X jump in productivity for her. So if we can give them a small machines to do this work, we buy it from them because they've already removed the shell. The cashew has now a little skin on the inside, like peanuts. You've seen peanuts with the yeah, skin. Yeah, yeah. So it has the skin after the shell has been removed. Okay. So we buy it now at that stage. So it's already been uh, value added. We mm -hmm. pay them more for it. So we're able to pay them 30 to 40% more. And then we take it now to our factory. So we built a factory in Zanzibar, in Tanzania, where we finish the processing. And wow. we do uh, peeling, grating, color sorting, now we added roasting and flavoring, and so we're doing small packs now, and those are the those are the kind of products that now you can take to the supermarkets in Rwanda and South Africa, without cashews having to have to go around the world. 
Amazing. Well, Fahad, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank Learned you. Learned more about cashews than I ever thought I would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not Christmas, but we got the nutcracker. Here yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for tuning in uh, to Really is for the Global Goals. I'm your host, Kevin Edwards, and thank you, Fahad, for coming thank in you, today, Kevin. the Chief Cashew Officer of YYTZ. Thanks so much.